Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, so we are back with another uh, workshop and webinar uh, today. Now the theme of this uh, webinar centers around the ERAD application for uh, this season as well as personal statements. So I'll be joined by two of my senior panelists, Dr. George Koshi and Dr. Siddhant Aroda. So first we'll uh, talk about the ERAD application and give you some tips on how to tackle the application. And then uh, we will also invite uh, our audience, you know, those of you who are going into the match this season, if you want to share some sentences from your ERAD application and uh, we'll give you tips and feedbacks on how you can improve it, uh, so on and so forth. So that'll be the ERAD application. And then we'll uh, switch gears and talk about personal statement, Dr. Aurora should be joining us after this session. So the ERAS section should be about uh, 40 to 50 minutes. Uh, we will have Q&A. You can put questions in the chat and uh, you know we'll, we'll look at it. And after that, we'll move on to the personal statement. And uh, without further ado, let me just uh, give it over to Dr. George uh, Koshi. And uh, George, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly. Uh, my name is George Villanilam, and uh, I'm a new radiology fellow. And I've been um, you know, working with the group for a almost a decade now, and uh, very happy to join uh, all of you and um, share some of my thoughts about the ERAS application season for the upcoming year, this 2025. Okay, we, we did this last year, and I think you get the most benefit when you interact and you um, ask specific questions about how to improve your particular CV. Um, and your ERAS application. So without um, taking much time, I'm going to start. All right. Just like last year, um, just like last year, and, you know, there are going to be changes every year in ERAS application. And last year was the year where the ERAS application had made significant changes and that created sort of an uproar, a lot of feedback and all that stuff. But, and, and some of you may be new applicants, some of you are repeat applicants. So this section is equally relevant to all of you. So in the 2024, 2025 session, that is a current session, the ERAS uh, has made more changes to the application, which I think is relevant to all of you. And even though there are a considerable number of changes, you should note that these are predominantly minor in nature, okay? So, just like the last year, there will not be a supplemental ERAS application for the 2024, um, 2025 cycle, okay? So for two ERAS application cycles, the AAMC, they kind of enhanced and researched and refined new ERAS uh, content with using um, and supplemental ERAS application. But then moving forward, just like last year, Applicants and advisors, like they can expect that the content of the ERAS application do not have uh, an actual supplemental application. But what is important to note is that there are components of the supplemental application in your main ERAS application, just like last year. Okay. So it's much more complicated, but in a way, it is a overall shorter. Um, uh, shorter kind of application than the years before. Okay, I'll explain more about it. So speaking of the first change, and you know, some of these changes will not, it's insignificant, but you know, I, I need to mention this because you know, for completion's sake. So um, your ACLS, the one of the main things is ACLS, PALS, and B, BLS certificate information. And note that whether you have the certification or not, it does not really matter in, in terms of your match success. But if you have it, now this, the, these questions are removed from the personal information section and they've been added to the licenses and certificate section. The other, um, uh, the AOA and 
gold human um, gold humanism society and all these things are not really applicable for international graduates but if you if these are applicable to you these are not um uh, these are not in the previous personal information section. These are now under the honors and awards subsection uh, in the education subsection. Okay. But again, like I said, these things do not have a significant role in your math success as an IMG. The next thing is um, language free fluency. I know a lot of people have confusion about what to put for language frequency, do I put advanced, do I put native or near native and whatever. This year they've made it um, slightly more simple where do you know how to, do you, can you speak English or can you, uh, do you meet the advanced level of proficiency in English? Yes or no, that's it. So they're not really asking you to categorize yourself as native, non-native or whatever. Essentially, can you communicate in English effectively or not? Um, other self-identification, like there's expanded ethnicity category and subcategories. Uh, hometowns, previously, I think there were uh, options to put up to five now hometowns. Now it's shorter and up to three, which I think is, you know, is better. And just to explain what the language fluency section looked like, uh, essentially, all you have to click is, do you meet or exceed the advanced level of proficiency and you would click yes. Uh, there's an option to select all the other languages you know, but that's not important, that's not required. Okay. Um, after language fluency, we talk about the education section. And this is important because every year we have people who have done some sort of educational courses or some sort of um, um, uh, home country residencies or other courses. And a lot of times it's hard to put that on the era CV because there is no specific section. Here it says that uh, they've replaced the institution um, open text field with menus and you have a write-in option so you can manually enter multiple fields of study. So I'm hoping that this section could be used for whatever home country residencies or home country courses or other degrees that you've obtained in your home country that would not have been possible uh, in your previous era's application. This, I think, is a big uh, change and something that we can leverage to make sure your experiences and your uh, education would be highlighted in the new era's application. Okay, uh, Honors and awards, it's uh, just in a new subsection, but it's pretty much the same. Uh, professional memberships are under honors and awards this time. Um, so it doesn't show up initially in the education section. So those are minor changes. Uh, another important change is, uh, you know, medical education section is moved to the actual education section. It's not in a separate section anymore. Uh, the next part is, I think, the most impactful for um, residents uh, or applicants for this year is your hobbies and interests section have come back. So previously, last year, uh, hobbies and interests, that was a separate uh, section in the expedient section. So for example, you had you were able you were allowed to put 10 uh, major experiences in your the expedient section. And you would have to sort of sacrifice one of those sections to add your hobbies and interests. This year, we're back to our original method where hobbies and interests were a separate section and you can add that and you know highlight that section. And that is very important, especially for international graduates who are trying to stand out or if you're trying to showcase your very many talents, uh, this is it, it's very helpful to have that as a separate section. It's 300 characters, so you know it's not a long, big paragraph, but it is still a separate section that can be highlighted and not uh, hidden in the experience section. Uh, license and certification. Uh, many times these do not uh, matter for international graduates, like I said before. Um, board certifications. Remember your international board certifications, your international medical registration and all that stuff, they do not apply here. So you don't have to put any of those things here. 
Okay, these are specifically if you have done a previous residency here in the US or you've done a, a preliminary year or PGY1 here and you're applying again or something like that. Otherwise, this, this section is not relevant for any of you. Um, the publication section has, you know, the, the citation style has been replaced, essentially uh, moving from this part where, you know, you had, you know, the APA style where you had period after each initial uh, and the and the number and the year and all that stuff. But now it's, it's much cleaner and, um, you know, no period and no uh, additional stuff. And the name of the journal is, uh, you know, abbreviated format and the DOI is as a DOI and not as a actual um, web address. So just minor changes. And this format is again mentioned on your ERAS application. So you can just type it exactly like the format. So it's, it's, it's gonna be easy. Or you could definitely just go to PubMed and uh, change it to AMA style and then you can copy paste that, that also works. Okay, so moving on to the next part is, you know, this is not really a change, but this is uh, this um, is a continuation of what has been there. Experiences, we, we continue to have 10 maximum experiences that you can use, okay? So by experiences, you could have your work experience, your volunteer experience, your any other research experiences or any of those things, right? And a lot of times people divide this 10 experiences by like, depending on what you want to highlight. If you're somebody who is an older graduate and you want to highlight your clinical experiences, you can put more of clinical and some research and some volunteer. Or if somebody who is a fresh graduate, so you have enough clinical experience, you can, um, and you're applying to a research heavy specialty, you can put some clinical and more of research and some um, volunteer experience. So it depends on your specific situation on how you want to uh, highlight these experiences. Okay. Or if you're somebody who's applying to multiple specialties, then you, you know, you might have to kind of divide it and uh, put multiple experiences for different specialties, you know? So it, this is dependent on your particular situation. The other thing is, and this is continuing from last year, uh, previously it used to be a supplemental application thing where you could put, so out of the 10 experiences that you mentioned, you can have three selected experiences out of the 10 and explain more about it. Essentially talk about what are the qualities you learned or what are the specific life lessons you learned from those experiences and add it, um, uh, add it in that specific selected experiences section. And Again, you have to be strategic about this. It things about what you want to highlight. Either you highlight one clinical, one research, and one volunteer experience, or if you know uh, three different clinical experiences of three different um, um, different atmospheres or different uh, clinical settings. You know, whatever, based on what you think. Uh, is lacking in your application, how you want to highlight stuff that would make your application more well-rounded, okay? And the other new thing is the impactful experience. So in addition to 10 experiences and three selected experiences out of the 10, um, AMC has given an option to add something known as an impactful experience. And an impactful experience is different from all these experiences. And it essentially means a, a really life-changing experience that made you who you are. Okay, so if you have, so if you are somebody who has an impactful story to write in your personal statement, then use it for your personal statement. But if you have multiple impactful stories, you've gone through so many different things, and you're like, I cannot add all of those stories into my personal statement. Think of one specific impactful experience that you can add to your um. Uh, actual ERAS application instead. Okay, so now you can use that those experiences to help you because now you have one for your personal statement and another one that you can add for the, your ERAS application. Okay, and ERAS, um, they have given examples of what you can write, like specifically, like if it's something challenging, like your family background, if you were the first um, generation to graduate college, or if you came from a really uh, low-income family, worked hard to support family growing up or whatever, 
right? If a, you you know you went through food scarcity, poverty, crime, you know all of those things, or limited education opportunities, you didn't have anybody to talk to, advisors or mentors, or just general life circumstances where you you know things that really made you who you are, um, that impacted your decision to applying for residency. Okay, so what's important is, and what is important here is programs do not expect all applicants to complete this section, okay? So this section is intended for applicants who have overcome major challenges or obst obstacles. And some people don't have experiences that are relevant to this section, so it's okay. But if you do, do not lose out on this opportunity to write that experience. But also there are also other applicants who may not be very comfortable sharing personal information in their application. So it's up to you. Uh, if you do write it, make sure you use it uh, well. But otherwise, if uh, remember, this is optional and programs do not expect all applicants to complete this section. Okay. So the bottom line for all of these experiences is to reflect and identify experiences that communicate who you are, not just add experiences just because you have to, but because you want to create a complete picture of yourself, okay? So for example, if your personal statement talks about your, your clinical prowess or if you about your personality and your letters of recommendation are talking about how uh, excellent you are with patients or uh, your, uh, your actual uh, medical knowledge or something like that, then use the ERAS application to or use specific experiences, talk about other aspects, talk about your interpersonal skills, Talk about your communication skills. Talk about uh, any other uh, things that you feel would complement you as a person, as, as a, the ideal resident, okay? So use it to complement other parts of your application, okay? So as we end this section, uh, I just want to talk to you about signals. And this is a question that came up last year and is coming up this year as well. Um, just like last year, we have signals again for programs. Uh, there, have been, there have been some minor changes, but overall, I think most programs have increased the uh, overall signals that you can apply. Uh, internal medicine, you know, the, for for um, IMG friendly specialties like family, internal medicine, pediatrics, and pathology, you know, they all have uh, signals. And family medicine, uh, I think internal medicine has increased the overall number of signals. Um, neurology has increased, I think it was five last year. Um, pathology, pediatrics, all of them have, and psychiatry, I think it was, I forget, it was eight or something. Uh, they have definitely increased. Uh, radiation oncology, I know more and more IMGs are applying to radiation oncology, so that's a new thing. So there's, there's more signals to radiation oncology now. And th again, this is another new thing where transitional year has up to 12 signals. So that's a uh, PGY1 uh, a year. So bottom line, a lot of ERAS changes, multiple ERAS experiences that you can add, including an impactful experience and three selected experiences that you can have to make yourself a well-rounded well applicant, okay? Um, and this cannot be, you cannot do this the day before your application deadline or even a month before. Start now, start now, think of all the stories that you have, think of all the experiences that you have and think about what are the contents of your personal statement, uh, what would be the contents of your letters if you know it and uh, your experiences in general. And then try to make yourself the most uh, well-rounded applicant for the specialty that you're applying to, okay? Um, I have attached QR codes for if anyone wants to if anyone wants to read more. Uh, this is the uh, ERAS application changes, and this is the worksheet. If you know many of you, I, I know many of you would like to practice. So th this is the actual work worksheet. If you want to um, download and uh, read more about it, it represents the actual ERAS application. Okay, so if you want to practice. Uh, wording and all that stuff. All right, so that yeah, uh, is the end for me. Yes, so thank you, thank you, George. So before we take the questions, because I was reading all the questions, 
remember we cannot answer your specific case i mean in some instances we may be able to but in a lot of uh, instances if it is very specific to you uh, then we will need to see your cv and ps and you know if you are interested uh, sejal can maybe post the link to our enrollment plan so that you can take a look uh, we do have extensive classes on ps and cv and how to do the entire iras application so sejal if you can uh, uh, post link and uh, George just reminded me as he was talking that we've actually now uh, this is our 10th year so we are celebrating our 10th uh, year and uh, we do have uh, some uh, discounts for you uh, so just in case you are interested uh, go to this page uh, you know and Sejal maybe can uh, send you uh, the link so sejal if you can send the link uh, so you know for our 10th year we are uh, promoting a lot of discounts for iras application so that uh, you can see so sejal has just posted the link so if you want to go there uh, with that maybe we'll take a few questions and then after that uh, for those of you who actually want their era cv excerpts so maybe from a particular experience if you want our uh, dr george koshi to give you feedback i think that will be very very helpful to you uh okay so let me read some questions george so i did my pg which i think is home country residency in pediatrics from india how and where to mention it in the era cv Okay, I think uh, I mentioned this. Uh, let's see. It's in now. It's in the um, higher education institution and field of study section. And if you're not able to fill it there, then you will have to add it as a specific experience. Yeah. Okay. As because now iras and obviously I don't have access to the actual iras application, but if you uh if when you go there and you look at uh the higher education section if they have mentioned that there is a write-in option like there's an actual area where you can type the field of study manually if you're able to do that do it and that would be the best way so that you don't have to sacrifice uh an experience to write that ex uh, section okay um this question comes up very often as an ing do you recommend we go for geographical preferences? I mean, it's very profile specific, but in general, what are your recommendations? Okay, uh, again, this is also very broad, but in general, my geographic preferences are places that I want to live in, okay? The other one is places that I've rotated at or places that I have connections, relatives, family, or um, uh, places that like I have um, seniors or other people in different institutions. So you'd have to choose three specific uh, geographical preferences. It's hard to choose, but in general for IMGs and very, very, very vaguely in general for IMGs, you would try to choose anything that is not California. <laughs> okay? But that would be, it's very different, uh, especially people have strong ties to California, then you have to choose California. So you you kind of have to use that um, your judgment and your experience for that. Yeah, and then again, you know, if you have specific issues around your profile, that's where our classes and our review of your CV helps. So, for example, there are IMGs in Missouri, in Arkansas, and, you know, the, there is less competition. So, you would tend to pick that region. So, anyway, so this is very specific. Uh, then the other common questions, uh, should I buy a U.S. number? And the answer is yes. You know, especially during soap, uh, not so much during the main season, but definitely during soap, they could just call you and no one is calling a non-U.S., non-Canadian number. So go ahead and uh, buy that number. Uh, so there are questions on, you know, again, these are very specific questions. Uh, how to address four-year period in my personal statement where I worked as a medical officer but did not involve formal training. Again, very specific questions to your profile. You know, 
will be hard to mention in one sentence. Uh, right. Okay, so George, why it... don't you suggest California? I think uh, someone is asking a counter question. <laughs> Yeah, let me answer both those questions. But in general, I think in answer to Muhammad and everybody else who is asking similar questions, if you have experience without formal training, it doesn't matter. You will add that as an experience in the experience section. That's where you have 10 experiences that you can add. So even if it is not formal training, you can add that as an experience. Is usually work experience where you worked as a medical officer or a junior resident or whatever, right? Uh, in response to the other question about California, just in general, like I said before, this is a very blanket statement. Um, in general, California has not been traditionally friendly for IMGs. But if you are somebody who has strong ties to California, it's different. If you are somebody who has done rotations in California, it's different. If you are a US IMG, it is also different just because US IMGs have certain ties and certain uh, experiences in California. So I was talking about uh, a very broad uh, perspective in case of, in terms of choosing geographical preferences. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, um, I have three surgery USCs, three IM. I'm applying for IM. Should I include three surgery rotations in experience section? Very, very specific questions. Uh, but in general, I would say if you are applying to IM, you know, focus on IM experiences. But I will have you answer this one question. Is it considered negative if I have less than 10 experiences? Uh, no, it's not. But I would ask myself, why don't you, uh, you know, figure out a way to add 10 experiences? So remember, it does not have to be uh, 10 clinical experiences. It does not have to be 10 research experiences. There are so many categories. But if you had the opportunity to make, to show yourself as a well-rounded person, why wouldn't you use it, right? And this is not easy. And like many of you may say that it's easy coming from me to just tell you like this. But if you, in my application season, I remember the more I thought about my experiences, the more I kept thinking about things I had done in medical school or things that I had done after medical school, the more experiences came into my head. So I'm telling you, this ha you have to start now. If you haven't already, start now thinking of every single impactful thing you have done. Even if for sometimes these volunteer experiences can be for a day or two, but those have an impact. So if you don't have 10, think about other things that can make it 10. Okay. Can we avoid mentioning our home country residency if it is if it does not go with our program or specialty choice? So Let's yeah. say someone has a home country in dermatology applying to IM. What, what is your recommendation? Mention it, not mention it. I mean, absolutely. If you don't want to mention it, you can, but then it's a three-year gap in your CV. So you have to, a lot of times there are people with dermatology residencies who apply for internal medicine residencies in the US. So the only thing is, you, you know, you, you explain why you switched. But if you don't want to add it, you don't have to, but then you have to explain your three-year or four-year gap in your uh, CV. Could you talk at a high level on how to utilize gold versus silver signals? And by the way, we do have a very detailed class on this, but uh, George, if you want to high level, uh, explain the gold versus silver. And I want to preface this by saying that Many people, including programs, are new to this. New, new to this. Okay, so even programs don't know what to think about gold signals or silver signals. And I think last year, what happened was many programs gave so much importance to signals. Okay, and that created a lot of disproportionate. Uh, you know, some people got interviews. Some people got a lot of interviews. Many people did not. So it's it's very weird, uh, and I don't think it is right just because of how much importance programs is give programs are giving it but in general gold and silver should be considered relatively the same because you're all you're doing is expressing your interest in that program okay so if you have what whatever specialty you are if you have 15 signals uh, 15 signals think carefully about what programs you want to give um, i would if it were me i would choose mostly programs that uh, either I have, uh, you know, I have, I have 
like I have a strong interest in getting in or programs that um, that sort of know me, but also like need a push to take me. Okay. Not really for aspirational programs because they don't even know you. So um, it's very, you know, person specific, but in general, I don't think that you should really differentiate between gold and silver uh, much. Think about signals overall. Uh, should internship be put as work experience? So after med school, you know, some yes. countries, in, including India, have an internship, I guess. So. Yes. Okay. All right. Is it too late to start the IRAD application? No, <laughs> you should. But if you haven't started it, start it now. It takes time. And, uh, you know, if you need our help, let us know. Uh, do teaching slash mentoring include only medical teaching? And for at least how long? I Not know. necessarily. Um, that would be in teaching experience or volunteer experience or whatever. But remember, work experience, you know, typically is medical and all that stuff. That is like your US clinical experience. But volunteer experiences, teaching, none of these things have to be medical. Okay. Especially volunteer. Don't think that you have to be working in a hospital to have a volunteer experience. No, it could be anything uh even if you even if you're washing dishes at a you know particular charitable organization doesn't matter you know you're doing a volunteer experience so it's non-medical okay yeah. uh i think now uh for students just to be fair to everyone if you've started your iras application and you want to get some feedback now is the time to put your feedback or you know your actual statement here what you're putting in iras here uh, for us to review. Uh, there are a lot of questions that I am seeing and we probably will have other session on this because some of these questions are, uh, you know, fairly basic. Probably you guys are not applying this season. When should I start my RAS application? How much USC, et cetera. Uh, but if you guys want a review of sections of your RAS CV, someone who wants it, put it in the chat and uh, we will answer it and the next uh, session right after this is on personal statement so you know hold on to the ps questions but uh, if you have uh, if you want a review now would be the time anyone who wants a uh, who wants to discuss this I think there are a lot of uh, general questions, but not really much on anyone wanting a review. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, so uh, let's take some of those uh, questions. Can I highlight my experiences in personal statement? Why would you? So if you have a CV or ERA's application where you have 10 experiences and three specific ones that you are allowed to highlight on your ERAS application, why would you waste space in your personal statement? Instead, use your personal statement to talk about, you know, a really impactful experience that, you know, obviously, obviously got you to where you are and also helped you decide why you're going into that specialty. So don't use your personal statement and i've seen this a lot of times where people talk about their personal statement in their personal statement they say yeah i did my rotation in california then i did my rotation in in las vegas then i did this rotation there no that is the purpose of the cv instead your personal statement should be specifically one great experience that that you tie in with uh, your interest in that specialty and what you're looking for in a residency program okay so yes. Yeah. Can we mention our unpublished research papers? Um, it depends. If you are, if it's submitted, then there is a section to submit, um, click as uh, status as submitted. But in general, submitted stuff without publication or anything don't have so much value. Uh, and they can, you can put 
that in your research experience section, okay? But if it is um, submitted and under review or something, you can definitely put that as a status. But in general, um, bottom line, you, you can put it in the publication section, but how much benefit? Uh, probably not so much. Okay. There are a couple of questions on volunteering, non-US versus US, and I'll take it up after this, just uh, before we move on to the next section. So, like I said, hold on to your questions on personal statement. Uh, we'll take it later on. Uh, let me see if there are other questions. Again, if you want a selective review of your CV, uh, you can you can put it here, and uh, you know we can review it. Let me see if there are other questions which are relevant and we haven't answered. Is applying to two hundred programs an overkill? No, uh, especially if you're applying to internal medicine or family medicine, it's it's not. It's a one fifty plus is recommended as an IMG. Uh, it depends on specialty, of course, but internal medicine, family medicine, and of course, your visa status matters. When you are when you don't re require visa, uh, you are eligible to much much more programs. So, two hundred programs is not overkill at all. So this is an interesting question. If we are applying to both IM and FM, so in our experiences, should we mention the experience as a rotation in IM slash FM, or don't mention the specialty at all? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. But um, if you have the option to not put it, sure you can. But again, people um, usually like if you're able to uh, not put a specialty, you can. Um, but make sure your letters of recommendation um, show that you're interested in whatever, right? Either internal medicine or family medicine, or whatever. Okay, so we finally have someone post a section of the era. So if you want to read it, it's a long one, so I don't want to read it. But if you can read it and give your review, obviously yeah. very quick, but uh, if you can. Of course. So that's good. So Anushka, uh, thanks for sharing. So uh, um, during my observation, my rotation, So I suggest everyone read it. So when we discuss it, you know, you have an idea. All right, excellent. And um, hopefully everybody can see it. So uh, the good points about this is one, you um, you mentioned specifics, okay? You mentioned specifics about how you did, you know, the fluid orders and something that I like uh, always is being how specific you are with the, in numbers. Okay, instead of saying I saw a lot of patients or I saw some patients or I saw I did some things. No, instead I, I saw about or I interacted with about 15 per patients daily, which helped develop your patient communication skills or whatever. So I like this. The only thing I typically add is I, I try to preface it by saying where, so because each uh, experience section, uh, they have a character limit as well, right? So you don't have to make it really wordy. Instead, you start off with a preface, right? I, I did this four week rotation with Dr. XYZ in a in an outpatient setting or, or in an outpatient setting um, where I predominantly saw um, dialysis patients or in an inpatient setting where I predominantly took care of patients with chronic renal disease, you know? So you would give them a, a nice preface, a preface of what your clinical situation was. After that, then you'll say, okay, my roles or the things I learned were, you know, um, you can talk about how you acquired skills to interpret uh, I, IV and all that. You can put them in points, you can put them in a paragraph, but you can delete words like I spent most of my time in dialysis units and all of that because in, you could put them as a preface instead, okay? The first paragraph, and then you can uh, add your experiences after that. I like your uh, me most meaningful experience out of that, where you added that you liked that you learned about patience and communication and empathy and all that. That's that's excellent. So overall, this is good. And when you're talking about research articles, uh, you said brainstorming sessions after research articles. Try to be again. Try to ex uh, ex uh, talk about an experience. So for example, say you have you've had three clinical experiences, and they're all going to be fairly similar. Where 
you're all brainstorming research articles or whatever. So instead you talk about a specific case. So maybe you saw a case of um, renal amyloidosis, okay? And talk about how uh, you, know, you, you presented this case or you read more about this case and maybe you submitted for, or you, maybe you submitted as an article or something. So try to be specific about um, the things that you've done. But overall, I think this is a uh, fairly well-written with you know, minor changes. Hopefully All right, we are coming to the end of the first session. So anyone else who wants a review of sections of their ERAS, you know, you can uh, paste it here or type it here and uh, then uh, he can review it. Otherwise, uh, you know, I'll let him go. I'll answer some questions as we wait for the other speaker. So uh, if anyone still wants a review, just paste it. There are a lot of questions and I'll answer those. Um, I do want to, you know, two related questions is, uh, I think somebody said PDs like bullet points, not necessarily. Uh, it is more, it is nicer to look at, but not everybody likes bullet points. So it is a personal preference. But if you're making it a paragraph, don't make it wordy. That's my point. <laughs> if you're making it a points, that's good. Make it as points. But if you make it a paragraph, don't make it wordy. Uh, you know, all these things additionally, uh, so for furthermore, and all that stuff. Those are for those are for manuscripts, those are not for your ERAS application. Okay. Yeah. We do have one last Lubhani Sharma. She's uh, posted her most meaningful experience. Uh, the experience began with cervical cancer awareness, female hygiene education, accentuating. Okay. So, um, yes, this is okay, but. Um, I haven't seen your other experience, but um, this is definitely good, but you need to talk about um, how this is going to help you. So it motivates you to address healthcare disparities, but um, add one or two points about how this is adding to your, um, adding to your general personality or adding to your, um, uh, your character. Okay. Yes, I like the point about addressing healthcare disparities, but add it, add more about how uh, this is going to help you in residency. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess uh, thank you very much, George. Uh, uh, maybe we'll take one last one, but uh... <laughs> it's, it's the experience. Yeah. 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 So, uh, in this experience, so okay, Lubani, uh, this experience is what I was talking about before. Uh, you played a key role. Uh, so yes, you key role in raising awareness. But when you say worked, playing key role or something, be specific about what the role was. So either you led a team or you coordinated a session or you created flyers or you... So talk about the specific ad adjectives that you would use to describe your role. That is That is more beneficial. And then... In, in general, in, instead of just saying, I, I, uh, I work to improve healthcare in girls, instead you would say, I, you know, I coordinated this session where uh, I was able to impart or where we were able to um, impart this particular knowledge to a group of 500 or more than 500 uh, village girls or something like that. So you're being very specific and you're being specific about the actual adjectives you're using. Yes, I counseled or I taught, or I mentored, or I created flyers. So those are the things you want to add. Yes, excellent. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.